My name is Dana Lattery and I am from Alberta. I travel. <laughs> I'm nomadic. Uh, currently I'm living in Olds, Alberta, Canada. How long have I been growing my beard for? Probably seven, six, seven, eight, seven, five, four, a while. Um, probably seven years. It stopped growing, so. If I had to choose between boxers and briefs, I would probably choose boxer briefs. It's a combination of the two. They're tighter boxers, uh, but they're a little longer than briefs. And they're not as baggy as boxers. You still feel free, um, but they still have some composure down there. My perfect day on the water is, first of all, no wind. I don't mind the weather, I don't mind the rain. Um, I'm not a fan of the cold days on the water. I think what I cherish the most about a day on the water is when the people in my boat uh, are, are making a memory together. So uh, obviously everybody wants a lot of fish and that would be really cool if that existed every single day. Uh, but what I like to see is, is the bond between the people that come on my boat, strengthen uh, throughout the day, whether it's husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, two buddies, father, son, uh, daughter, dad, mother, son, whatever it is. I just really cherish uh, getting to witness some of these relationships form throughout the day. Uh, and probably another big thing that I, that I love in a perfect day is when I can see people come to a kind of a Zen moment and uh, they talk about how busy their life is and how work how work's so busy. And eventually a couple hours in, they, uh, they can't believe how at peace they are because I, I know that's why I come fly fishing. So if I can extend that to the people in my boat, uh, sometimes it takes all day to do that and some days it happens just in the first five minutes. Uh, yeah, I, I love the fact that memories are being made, uh, relationships are, are getting stronger bonds and uh, people are uh, coming to a little bit of peace through spending a day on the water. My favorite fishing memory, I think you get about one, and I'm, yeah, I'm probably equating that to uh, some prolific hatches that we fished. Uh, you, you can kind of think of one time a year where everything just went absolutely right. I. I love a good hopper day, I love fishing foam, so I mean anytime you can have uh, a lot of opportunities to fish through foam, whether I'm fishing it myself or we're guiding it. Uh, I, I don't know, I think it's hard. I think I would be cheating what fly fishing brings us if I had to try and uh, pick just one, because there's, there's, as my brain is thinking, there seems to be quite a few. The best vacation that I've ever been on 
I wish it revolved two of them. Uh, one was fishing related and one was, I would fish a little bit, but uh, time in Maui uh, with Janine. I don't know why that just got emotional, but. Um, <laughs> I think the idea of how busy we get, um, all of us as guides, we get to spend a lot of time on the water with strangers, and I think it's uh, often forgot that we get to spend time with family, and when we get to go on those vacations, for myself, I like to go places that I can do stuff and fish, and uh, we got to go spend 10 days in Maui, and we literally did nothing, and it was, it was cool because we just got to spend time with each other. Um, and then uh, a very close second to that was the time that uh, a bunch of the guys with Fly Vision Bow River went over to Oman and uh, we shot a film and we got a fish for species that we've never even seen in our lives. Uh, again, we, we, we forged stronger relationships, we built memories and uh, uh, we learned to love a little deeper and become more uh, at Zen with what fly fishing does. So. What was my perfect day on the water? I guess it parlays into what my uh, perfect vacation is. Um, my favorite celebrity, I don't know if I have one, but boy did I have a crush on Katie Holmes when, when she was in Dawson's Creek. I had a picture of her in my wallet. And I thought one day I'd have a chance and then Tom came along and uh, yeah, that's about how that ended. What's one thing you guys would be shocked to know about me? I, uh, I don't know if anything's really shocking. I used to uh, jump with horses. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, it worked, it worked good until I got a little bigger. And then I had to take a career change. Uh, just didn't feel as fair to my horse trying to get me over like four foot obstacles. So yeah, I grew up with horses and I rode kind of more the equestrian style, which is probably why it's funny for some of you. I wore tights, tight pants. It's where it goes back to the boxers and briefs. You need you need a, a bit of a boxer that's tighter because they needed to fit in those in those pants. Um, and if that's shocking, then let me know because I probably have some more shocking things for you when you get on my boat. <laughs> um, my favorite season is. Probably right now, fall. Um, yeah, the, the colors are beautiful. I do like the colder nights. Uh, July is hot and August can be hot. I mean, it's great to wet weight and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's hot and it's nauseating sometimes on the river. Uh, but there's nothing beats the cool mornings of fall and the cooler evenings of fall. And sometimes we're lucky that it kind of lasts for a while. Sometimes uh, the snow comes quick and ends it, but uh, I think I just kind of cherish something about each of the seasons. Uh, but right now it's pretty cool. Fall, fall's cool. Why do I choose to row a hide drift boat? I started with a hide, an older hide, and I had that for a long time. Uh, the boat was I got it from a guide, so it's been used a lot in the river, and it was it was getting worn a bit. Um, I through that time I tried other boats. Uh, there's a lot of great boats out there. I think uh, the market is very similar, and they're like vehicles. They're just a style that you like. So with my old boat, um, I loved it. I made a lot of memories in it, and then. Uh, when I upgraded my boat, I just realized how uh, Ferrari-like they are in the water, how uh, when you want to go somewhere, that boat goes with you. When you want to hold a line, but never once does it feel like you're stuck in mud trying to get it up on plane. Uh, other boats that I've rowed, uh, they're just not for me. I've, I feel like they were hard to row. They were, they didn't hold a line. They were heavy. Um, so I think it's a cool mixture of the convenience from our standpoint of rowing and the comfortability for the clients. And I know there's some boats out there that are, are like Cadillacs and they're extremely luxurious, but they're horrible to row. And 
So uh, it's that fine line of what really works well for us because we got to roll these things a lot of time in the summer. And our clients and our people and our friends and our family that come and spend the day with us, they got to be comfortable. And I think they've kind of checked all the boxes. Uh, I like the modular system where you can design how you want the inside to fit you. Uh, you're not thrown in a, in, a, in a mold or a box and you're told this is what you get, this is what you got to work with. Uh, the people at Hyde are great to work with. We've all got very custom looking boats. They've uh, never uh, balked at it once when we threw some crazy colors at them. And uh, yeah, so that choice of my old boat getting a new one and just seeing kind of the innovative upgrades that they've done. And I feel like I'm spoiled every time I get in my boat. I'm, I'm grateful. And uh, at the end of the day, I don't feel completely burnt out because my boat wasn't taxing on me all day. I think that's super important if this is something that you're going to do for, for a long time. And now you know a little more. And now you know the rest of the story, folks. <laughs> the fact oh. that I enjoy, what did I call them? Broxers? Bo boxer briefs. Briefsers. Boxer briefs. Yeah. Well, the truth of the matter is what? You don't wear underwear. <laughs> That's why that question was so yeah. difficult, folks. I'm Dana Lattery, obviously, or yeah. maybe not obviously, but I, I hope to... And he only to... has about three more years of wearing shorts before it's going to be inappropriate <laughs> to go in public. That's that's <laughs> a good point. Oh, I just have to make you need my support, okay? shorts longer. Oh, yeah. You're going to be a capris. Uh, pedal, pedal pushers. Pedal pushers. That's Tim Hepworth. What's up, If everybody? you were here last week. Katie Holmes. Joel, I'm telling you what. It was bad, okay? Yeah. And... As I kind of looked back later in life, from now looking back, I, I'm not even ashamed of it. I'm pretty glad. She aged well. See, the, the problem was when we did those interviews, the guys had to ask <laughs> questions. Weird ones was the goal. And they didn't no, ask they weird ones. Serious, no. They went serious on me. So what's happening here? It's Thursday Night Live <laughs> fly tying. We're going to tie a couple flies tonight. Jim Crawford says, still not enough info. Well, Jim, come over and I will give you a hands-on <laughs> uh, Maybe hands-on isn't... Uh, uh, well, uh, his neighbors, we're neighbors. Yeah. I would we put are money good on neighbors. the fact that he wears briefs. Yep, and tidy I bet, whities I bet they're so thin and <laughs> see-through if they're anything like my dad's. <laughs> I've unfortunately oh, Jim. been scared. Jim, are you back too. from vacay? Oh, no. He's wearing those John, on the beach right now. <laughs> John Onorati's in the oh. house. So he did come back. He did come John, back. John, have, you forgiven, have yes. you forgiven Dana yet? Uh, he took a while to come back, folks. <laughs> and if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about bingo, which you can see kind of over there. It says, get your bingo cards here. And that's the website to go get your Watermaster Flyingo because we do play bingo and we have some really cool prizes tonight to give away. We do. But there's also heartbreak. The yes. doors may I... or may not have changed. I can't believe you're still doing this to people. But the best part about the doors is that the prizes will accumulate. So like last week, we threw out a lot of prizes. Okay, so that's what's cool about, about bingo. It. Bingo's free. If you haven't downloaded a bingo card, download a bingo card. If you have a bingo card, it still works. If you won, you can still win. Um, you can win multiple times. There's, there's no, uh, there's no problem with that. So download your bingo cards. We will play bingo at one point today. The flies today are a little quicker, um, so they're not going to take super long to tie those flies we're gonna kind of open today up with a little more conversation uh based on the fact or the state of things in the world mm. uh greg childers is back Ooh. we are glad you're back what's up Mark Chaz? watson's here Chaz is also here morgan is here john morgan. is also here is morgan sean allison here? folks <clears throat> He is <laughs> down in Florida, oh, burning. he is in Florida today. He's of the paler skin tones, uh, like yourself and me. He may have some redder hair. Why don't you grab the prizes? Oh, yeah. We can so show can the folks. 
show everybody alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. what the prizes are, Tim. Just remember, I'm the, the person showing you the good things. I'm not the one taking them back from yeah. you. He is like your mom. <sighs> Looks like her, acts <laughs> like her. <laughs> Okay. You're, well, you're the nice one. Well, yeah, I, I got to like yeah. lay the hammer down. I'm here for love and support. So we got some stickers going out tonight, guys. Fish Pond, Water Master. Those ones are going. We got our Shore $100 package worth of fly tying materials. These suckers are going out. Everything and anything in there. We have a combination of uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and ourselves here. We are giving you a pretty epic little box. Okay, a little fly box. A dozen a foam. Dozen foam. We got, and some of these are patterns we've tied this year, and some are patterns yet to come. So great ones to have in your box. And then we, from our other main sponsor, Watermaster, you got your dry self a dry bag. So when you come on a float with us, you keep your phone dry. <laughs> because you won't need that. You won't. To keep it dry, <laughs> because Tim's rowing is stupendous. Stupendous. So yeah, there's about three hundred dollars in gear and stuff, um, valuing a foam fly now at the fly shop. It's a crazy. Just about as much as a gallon of gas. Touche. That's actually crazy to think about it that way. I think I take the gas. Well, these days, two hundred dollars to fill a truck. That's a good point. That's a good point. So what do we do here? We tie a couple patterns tonight. We're tying the pearl zonker which Tim will show you over on that camera. Uh, the Pearl Zonker, it's a great saltwater pattern. It's a great freshwater pattern. It's a streamer pattern. It's a pike pattern. It's a trout pattern. Um, in the smaller size we're tying tonight, it could probably be best served as a trout pattern. Mm -hmm. I would assume bass might. I've, I've personally never fished for bass, so I don't know, but I you know think I they we'll might like this. something like that. I guarantee you would eat this. A trigger fish. Yeah, well, that's a good point. <laughs> I also saw we need a popper once. The were fishing goes twice its size. Yeah. And then we are going to tie another great one tonight. This one, I mean, little is little. This is a shop bag. That is little. It's like be size super 18. little. We're tying it in tonight. Great little midge pattern though. The Fly Fisher 54 checking in from Duchess, Alberta. Way Duchess. down in the southern Albertas. Foam flies, never seen them. <laughs> okay, Ken. Yo, Ron needs that dry bag. Well, Ron, you make sure. So also what I have for you guys here, um, if you're local, play along with me, okay? Because next Thursday is our meetup at Trax Pub in Old Alberta, Canada. I want to see more people there because I want to meet more people. Selfishly, that's why I want you to come. <laughs> so next Thursday, we broadcast here. It's put on the big screen at Trax Pub. Um, just down the road here and then as soon as this is done we get to come and hang out with you guys so carpool find a way to come here bring your kits and um, let's hang out yeah TNL fam fam jam uh, chip wants me to take it off what exactly. not sure what chip wants me to take <laughs> off maybe uh, the boxers or the briefs he, but I uh, see there's not on right now. So what we're doing here is I got a, I got two fifty dollar tracks gift cards to give away. Uh, they're Ooh. not going to do you any good if you um, you don't have to. They're, they're not just good for next week. But we have two more meetups after that at Tracks Pub. So if you do want uh, to come at any point, then definitely uh, <laughs> buy the carpool from Quebec. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a smooth week. Of but driving. if you're planning on coming next week or I mean, you can use it all summer if you want. Whenever you, if you're if you just just try to be around the area. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is from last week's show in the comments and the first one that we see that writes this. It's not a number, but what is Tim Hepworth's favorite ice cream? If you watched last week's show, it was at the beginning and that's oh, kind of the yes. bonus of watching the whole entire show. $50 gift card. Let's see it in the comments. Looks like Jen Lyle's back. The, yeah, she the, is. The perv in her. The perv in her. Oh, right there. We got it. Shelly Ellenson Oh, there wins. it is. You got it. Shelly, where are you from? Are you coming to Tracks Pub? <laughs> yeah. Would be great. If it's really Shelly. Oh, look at you guys. You actually listen to me. This is great. Oh, they love you, Tim. They're going to all bring you mint chocolate chip oh, ice cream. Man, please. 
I haven't had it in a okay. while. Okay, $50 gift card. Well, since we're doing the giving spirit, yeah. and we like to honor the folks who come early and stay late, because mm-hmm. bingo is going to be a little later today. Um, Shelly, yes, she's from Edmonton. So, yeah, you can come down to tracks whenever you want, and if you want to come next Thursday, that's, that's pretty we'll cool, be. too. Yeah, yeah. So, Tim. Mm-hmm. You have to think of something for them to win the second one. Maybe it has to do with my interview or. Yeah. Let's, let's, it's up let's to you, Tim. That. You're not good I, at these. You're I, not good I, at I'm jokes. Not, I am good. You're, you're, not you good you're not good at being mean to people. Okay. I got one. Okay. First thing to get put in the comments. In Dana's perfect day of fishing, it needs to have one thing that doesn't show up. That is a good point. Tell me what it is. What can't show up in my perfect day on the water? Boxer briefs. There There's Scott Nelson. <laughs> no wind. Scott Scott. Scott Nelson. Craig Jones. The first well one done. to show up there, as you guys could see, was Scott Nelson. Well $50 gift card. And I believe Scott's up in Edmonton. So maybe Carpool, the two Edmonton folks, could come <laughs> down and... They said underwear. I kind of feel like that's also the right answer. That's, well, that's <laughs> fact. That just doesn't show up. Uh, Scott's coming through. All right. The Scott's got us covered. Scott's have us Starbucks. covered. Starbucks, John, you know better. Oh, yeah. Yes, you are right. Wind, wind, wind is a terrible game changer to a day. So I think that's a great way to start off the show. Yeah. $100 to Tracks Pub. Given out, I wrote your guys' names down. That way, I remember. But you still have to email you, don't you? No, I, I got it written <laughs> yeah, down. Figured out. I All got right. it. I got that one taken care it. of. All right. So, also, what's scrolling across the bottom of the screen there is oh, something that says TNL Fam Twenty. Okay. So tonight, this code ends tonight. Um, our sun shirts. If you haven't purchased a sun shirt, we still have some in stock from last year's order. Uh. These are worth it. These are worth it. These are, these are pogues. <laughs> are these ones pogues? Yeah. Nice. Well, he got one of each so we oh, can yeah. open them up. Oh, yeah. So anyways, you go under our website, flyfishingboarder.com. Go to the store. And uh, we're going to start with the shop vac. So thread, uh, a, a dot. A dot or 70 denier and an olive would be perfect. Olive. Yeah. So get those things go. Justin Fisher's late to the party. So this these are our sun shirts. Tim's got one of the styles. The best one. Wear, wear these all summer. Literally, they're they're super cool. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay, that's uh, the that's other style. Cool. You gave me both the two best ones. Yeah, because you're the mom. <laughs> This one is actually a really good one too. I like this one a lot. This is our retro hoodie. Looks so crisp and clean right now. Yeah, After is. a season of guiding, mine didn't look this good. They fit kind of like a boxer brief. Yes, they do. And then this is our love people catch fish. That's a great one too. They're cold, like they're sun shirts, guys. They're not. It's that they're, like they're sun shirts with a hood, and they they chill. Like your your nipples will be hard. <laughs> Imagine you just took a brand new piece of dentine and put it in your mouth and then took a breath in. Yeah, That's your menthol like. menthol shirts. And then the back here is really cool because it's uh, waffly. Like it's, yeah, it's all waffly, so you you just don't sweat much. It pulls all the moisture away from you. Yeah, uh, it is. What color thread? Olive. Olive thread Oliver for Black. you folks. Yep. Uh, that code is good for the sun shirts tonight um, because... In the next week or next uh, next couple episodes, we're gonna have the next uh, patterns. And with these, we're not making these anymore. We make a run of shirts with a design. Yep. And, uh, and you'll never you know, see them again. The, the other cool thing here is that these are sublimated, so this isn't uh, a silk screen where the ink sits on top and gives you. A, a little point of no breathing that makes you sweat. These are sublimated, so they're in the material. So they are basically the material. Mm-hmm. So they breathe. They're not like... You don't get that uh, sticky thing stuck to you. Yeah. Sticks. Sticks. 
Eric Augustine, his nipples are hard just thinking about these shirts. They, as they should be, as they <laughs> should be. And yes, they do fit gorilla-sized people too. Um, so it kind of like if if you're an athletic body. <coughs> what does that mean, Dana? Like you're an athlete. Um, if you have a little bit of paunchy, maybe go up a size. Uh, if you're athletic, fit like uh, Steve Lyle, <laughs> then true to size is Thank what you it would mean be. Jen Lyle. Uh, Tammy would like one. Hopefully yes. she's talking about the shirt and not the thing that Eric had. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Colin. Uh, <laughs> keep, keep it PG. Yeah, he's back at the house. You better be careful. Come over here. Yeah, he's probably at the shop. All he right, is. so those are there. That's tw- that's 20% off tonight. Yeah. Also, if you do want to get a Season 4 kit, uh, we're not going to go into that too much tonight to bore you with. <clears throat> but all 40 patterns are tied and the materials in there to follow along with us. You don't have to join in on Thursday nights. You can just go watch all the quick ties because every Thursday after the show, the quick ties go up there and uh, feel free to just, some people don't even watch the show. They just buy the kit. They get 40 different patterns. Uh, they can sit and tie up all those patterns. Essentially they're walking away with 120 things. Other cool thing is you get a 20% discount to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Yeah. And you get $100 off of a guided trip with us this summer. So uh, go buy a Norvice. Go spend some money at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. That 20% off and $100 gift card uh, to Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters. Mm-hmm. You've already paid for, <laughs> you your, paid kit. for your kit. Just like so, that. Uh, you also get six rolls of thread in there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Good that's stuff. A, that's what that's it is. <laughs> that is what it is. All right. I think <laughs> I've done all of the housekeeping things. Oh, sorry. Just one last thing, folks. Next week, if you're in the Montana area, area, our friends at Wolf Creek Anglers, we sent them a bunch of kits uh, to give out to people. So if you're in the uh, Craig Wolf Creek area, Helena-ish, uh, feel free to go up there. They're also having a draw for... Uh, a full season kit uh, so check them out uh, Wolf Creek Anglers um, and if you're in Montana they have lodging they have cabins which hopefully they have large all beds the people <laughs> they have a bed that's so big it's it's like literally it's like this that's a good story I do want to tell the story <laughs> so we went there three two, whatever before COVID was a thing and uh, me Tim and Brandon we got a room well, a cabin okay so you get like your bathroom and there's a couple beds in there there's one that's like uh maybe a double and then the other one's maybe a single a half a single yeah half a single it's like tiny. so somehow brandon he took the bigger bed by himself and then me and tim were kind of like comfortable sleeping in the same bed and so we're like oh whatever Okay, so we're in this small. No, maybe they were both the same size. It's I think just they that, were the same. Just there yeah, because I'm like, on why one. would we take the smaller one? No, this is a lot did. of questions I've got to answer to the people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so the next day, we fished that day, froze, froze solid. And then the next day, Brandon had to get up at like 4 a.m. Uh, he had to head back, and we were staying a couple more days. So we're in Montana, right? Wolf Creek. And uh, the Venetian, the old metal Venetian blinds on these cabins. And so Brandon leaves. He doesn't wake us up. He doesn't say, hey, maybe one of you guys wants to jump into this bed. But what he does do is cracks the blinds to go check on his truck. (laughs) Right? Because it's parked outside, right out front. And then uh, he leaves. Well, we, you know, we're sleeping in. And about 8 o'clock, it starts to get bright in the room. And I look up. And uh, there's literally people walking <laughs> in Montana <laughs> past our window, and our windows open the the blinds. And me and Tim are there <laughs> sharing a bed, sharing a bed, <laughs> and there's, <laughs> there's a bed wide open. And I, yeah. yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe nobody in uh, Wolf Creek wants to grab one of these kids. <laughs> yeah. um, you never know. But so Brandon <laughs> left us. I mean, love who you love, but together. it's just for you to like to share. Together. Not have to share a bed. But uh, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. There's no one else I'd rather share a bed with. Nope. Nope. Other than Janine. 
And Justin. Yeah, uh, Justin. Justin. He's, yeah. Yeah, Justin, he's a good snorer. Yeah. So, he snores, though. Um, Definitely if he's had a couple of beer. Yeah. So that's the best part about fishing trips. We do hope to go back in April if we can get out of the COVID situation here and go back to Wolf Creek Anglers. So if you're in the area, check out Wolf Creek Anglers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are on the Missouri. So super fun <laughs> place to be. And you can actually drink beer on the river. It is something special. Tim is the little spoon. Oh, well. You don't have to guess. You just have to know. And no underwear in the bed. Well, guys, now <laughs> you have all created a story that makes me just want to say, hey. So the other cool thing is, um, way too much info tonight. <laughs> What's the other cool thing? <laughs> <laughs> that you're about to tie a shop back. Shop back. A great little nymph tied in an ultimately small pattern tonight. <laughs> small size is what <laughs> I. I can't. The comments keep coming in, and it's. Uh, uh. Uh, we relive this anniversary each year. Well, the, the bad part about that comment, Eric, is that you've narrowed that down to only celebrating that moment once a year. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and just that's not a enough. problem. <laughs> 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 not yeah, nearly right. enough. Let's tie some Let's flies. Let's tie people. Let's do it. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I'm going to head on over to my season Certified four. Certified badass. Episode 10 kit. All right. So in the back, you're going to see one with red feathers in it. That's not the one we're after. We're after the other guy there. And I am going to emphasize this a lot today because this pattern especially is very tiny. Be careful. You do not, when you open that bag, drop the little beads and the little hooks because I know what happens every week. And we don't want it to happen tonight. And you lose some of those materials. So I'm going to go ahead, get this little bag here opened up. There it is. You got a size 18 hook in there. It is not big at all, but it is not a bad pattern to tie real small. So it's a little intimidating at first, but I promise you we will get through this one. So you're not gonna have a ton of materials in there. Um, You've got a couple of hooks because you can have enough material to tie this fly twice. Maybe even more if you had a couple other hooks. You have some wire. It's gonna try to hide in there on you because it's extra small. Make sure you set that aside. Okay, we got some para post or this could easily be antron or zelon okay you don't want to lose that so set that aside then we just have some peacock curl and a little bit of pheasant tail and that is going to be all we're going to use tonight on this pattern so first thing first go ahead and get that bead on that tiny little hook which is probably one of the hardest parts of this entire pattern remembering that when you put that hook in it's got to go in the small hole oh, on the side of the bead oh, not, not the, the big, big hole. hole not the big hole which is, this is honestly the worst <laughs> part of this pattern. <laughs> oh, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, Innuendos tonight? Well, no, like beads everywhere. Oh, that too. Joel's like, ultra wire? You mean ultra invisible wire? It is not big. It is not big. But it's to match the pattern. As you can see there, that is not a big hook. It's a tiny little one. Okay. So I'm going to take my UTC... 70 denier in olive because at the top of this fly we finished it off with some peacock curl so olive is a good choice if you got it if not just something dark would be good i'm going to start that right behind the bead i'm going to go ahead and trim off the tank now the first material we're going to reach for is that wire we're going to get that tied in before we lose it 
Um, I like to tie this in right up high, so I'm gonna tuck this up under the bead. It's gonna create a nice even uh, underbody as I go forward. So I tuck that under the bead, and I'm gonna finish wrapping this down. And we are gonna go about as deep as we can into that bend. So right about to there. Okay, it's good to, to get the kind of that full curve shape of what this midge would look like. Um, and then I'm gonna bring my thread all the way up. Kind of open spiral. I'm not trying to put too many wraps down because I also don't want to build up too much bulk because this is a midge pattern. It's supposed to be small. Okay. Now the next material we're gonna run and grab is our pheasant tail. Okay. This stuff is so unbelievably versatile. If you don't really know, this is a great pattern to show it to you because each one of these little strands of, um, off this feather have all these micro barbules on them and it makes a super buggy looking pattern that's why we do it that's why we wrap them up on pheasant tail nymphs and that's why we're going to do it on this one as, as well so i want you to go and maybe grab three or four strands but no more we don't we don't want a big big buggy fly so i'm going to grab that's two i'll just grab a third separate them away from each other Oop, grab those you want to make sure that those tips are, are fairly aligned and then we're gonna tie in those tips. So I got those three together. It's gonna kind of organize them a bit so that they come together. And I'm actually just gonna snip them off so they're actually all even. Okay, now I'm gonna tie this in right behind the bead. Okay, secure that down and just open spiral this, not super tight wraps, open spiral that into the bend. Okay, and now as I come back up, I'm gonna do nice, even touching wraps. This is gonna make a really okay, nice. Okay, hold tight. I missed an SOS here. I was. Oh, sorry, guys. I was taking a pee. I'll bring my thread up here and leave it still. Ryan is tying this on the pearl zonker hook. Ooh, that's gonna be a big old nymph. A big old. Oh one. man, I ran. I ran. Whew. I ran who hard. Who SOS this? Did you get a manic here? Oh, Ryan. Ryan. I did not. Nope, not yet. Still waiting for that. So we'll kind of explain what this means if you're just seeing red and blue flashing lights. That yeah. is stop our show, SOS. Yeah, if you need us to answer a question or you need to catch up on the fly, anything um, is fine. Don't worry about that. Um, if you have a question or you want something answered before we move on, all you do is you say SOS in the comments. We do exactly what Dana just did. We'll stop the show and we'll answer your question. Um, and then when you're ready to go, just put it back in the comments that you're ready to rock and roll and we'll get back at it. Sean wants to start a GoFundMe for your nails. I wouldn't touch GoFundMe with a thousand foot pole. Touche. Uh, the code, sorry, the code for the Popo did show up once to a year uh, uh, last season uh, the, the code is TNL FAM20 all in capitals mm. let's just go I think it's uh, I had it here there it is there the code's coming across the screen TNL FAM20 all caps all caps nice all right, Ryan says he's good to go. All right. All right. So, guys, what I did there at the end there, I just threw a half hitch on there so that I can set my um, my bobbin over on my cradle. Okay. Now, first material I'm going to bring up is going to be that pheasant tail. And now it is kind of um, kind of small, so I like to grab it with just a little, whatever hackle pliers you got. Um, grab the butts of it. And we will get this wrapping up. So I'm gonna come in here and grab those. What I like to do is actually take one, two, three twists, and sometimes that helps hold those fibers together so one doesn't try to jump up ahead of the other ones. Um, but if you do too many more, then it'll actually fracture or break it, okay? And now just nice touching wraps Touch as the wraps. we move up the hook. And as you can see there, it's making a super nice little fuzzy appearing body which is exactly why we use this material super versatile material as you can see I did lose one of those ones that's all right and we don't have to take it right up to the bead we can leave a little bit of space behind it okay I'm gonna take it to yeah I'll go one more wrap because I got it we'll probably come back over that a little bit with our other materials but that's all right so then I'm gonna take that wrap behind in front behind 
in front, and that means that that's good and secure and it's not going anywhere. I'll reach in there and I'll snip that out. And now we're just gonna repeat that process with our wire. Now, if you know anything about pheasant tail, similar to peacock curl, it's quite fragile, so we can really um, kind of beef it up or give us our, the life of the fly um, a little bit more time on this earth if we go ahead and put some wire around it. So I'm gonna just do nice open spirals. I'm not uh, doing a ton of them, just kind of nice open spiral. It gives it some flash in that body as well as it gives it some segmentation and ultimately it just gives it some durability, which is really what we're looking for. It'd be nice to catch <clears throat> maybe two or three, four fish off of this fly before it falls apart versus maybe just one. Go ahead and get rid of that wire. That's what it's left us with now. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab this. It is very chilly in here tonight. <laughs> yeah, it is. Lovely. If we're I put on a sun shirt right now. <laughs> Could uh, open that window with... So might have to close that window. <laughs> yeah, but then it'll be so hot. You know it will. Counter wrap. Scott Scott says, do you counter wrap? Um, yes, you can, for sure. Um, I normally find that I don't. But what I do is when I start my first wrap, I change the angle of the wrap. So it's actually going over, not with the grain, but actually going across it slightly. Um, if you were to go back and watch this again, you'd probably see that I do that. I lean it at a little different angle. I personally like that it moves with the grain of what was folded ahead because it just sits nicer as you can see it looks very um uniform to the fish care probably not at all that's just a, that's just a me thing counter wrap is good it, it the whole point of it is just that it gives you um extra security and if you counter wrap you probably are getting a little bit more durability out of it because you're a little like it sounds like counter wrapping across it but good question um so out of this clump you have here i would say go ahead and grab half of it we don't need it all split half of it off like so and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab and kind of twist this stuff so that it kind of ropes up a bit and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim it so it's flat like so now I'll switch hands and I'm gonna tie this in right behind the bead I'm gonna leave a little bit hanging out over the bead just so I can get a hold of it with my thread to start with do a couple wraps and then I can pull this back see watch how this works just like that and then I can secure it down right up into that bead. And I wanna wrap back about a full bead behind the bead in length, okay? So it leaves me a little bit of space for this thorax, which I'm gonna put in here shortly. And now guys, we are gonna put the last material in and we're pretty much done this fly. Pretty much done. Just got a piece of peacock curl, I'm just using one. I'm gonna break off that brittle tip because it's always, as we talk about, quite a brittle material, but it helps if you get a little farther down the stem. And now I'm just going to take a nice gathering wrap right where I left off with that other stuff. I'm going to pull that back, secure it down. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this forward. Don't pull too hard because it will break if you pull too hard on this stuff. Just make a nice fluffy little thorax and then secure that off. So again, wrap behind, wrap in front, wrap behind, wrap in front. And all I'm going to do here is snip this out and then whip finish this off a little trim to that poly yarn and we are all set to go okay oh, yeah that's what i mean guys you could tie this easily oh, down to yeah. like a size 22. i know it sounds you crazy, could also it's... tie it as big as a size one you could one i don't tie that's what i meant <laughs> snip that out Ooh. and now how we decide the length of this <clears throat> this wing or this emerging wing that we're emer imagining this is is I'm gonna use this uh, back portion of the hook to guide my scissors. And I like to take the angle that that hook appears to be laying in, and I lay this material on me, close my scissors, and snip. And that gives me basically that exact length I want to sit just to the edge of the back of the hook. And there you go, guys, that is your shop back. I promise Why you, if you got picky fish, this is a good one to have. Do they yours. call it the shop back? <sighs> if I knew, I would tell you. it sucks up everything all the fish just all like the fishes? The, yeah it's just just it's done like sucks them all up boys and girls well everybody oh, that's bug. ordered shirts that's awesome yeah that's um good, guys. that's really cool we'll get those out soon dylan dutra's in the house what's up dylan so what do we talk about if you tie one of these how many should you tie the dozen. answer is 12. The answer is 12. Especially when a pattern is 
that quick to tie. Quick and easy. Um, and if you didn't quite get it or if you need a redo rendition on our YouTube channel, there's what we call the quick ties. Mm -hmm. So you could they'll be posted after this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. The Flames game is on in 15 minutes, folks. And if you haven't been watching hockey this year, well, that's too bad because Calgary Flames are doing awesome. <clears throat> you know who else is playing? Some dudes with balls. Fuck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Golden State Warriors are playing the Trailblazers right now. What's also For cool, all those who care. if you guys have not subscribed to Fly Fusion, their latest, um, I think it's the, it would be the spring issue, just came out. Just hit the shelves. Probably didn't hit the shelves. It hit your mailbox if you're a subscriber because you get it first. But if you don't know what Fly Fusion is, head over to their website, subscribe to their magazine. This is kind of what it looks like. So, because the cool thing about Fly Fusion is they're also the company that runs IF4, the International Fly Fishing Film Festival. And you can also go to flyfilmfest.com and check when the film fest is playing in your area. And stay tuned, Alberta folks, because we have something unannounced perhaps coming for you. And that would include the TNL fam. Oh, yeah. And the IF4. Uh, we're just trying to figure out some details about how that's all going to unfold in the month of March. But we will figure it out. Yep. Uh, they're also, they are in Calgary. It's playing. And I believe it's in Edmonton sometime in April. Yeah. But if Calgary and Edmonton are not your thing, we got somewhere in between. I just want to hang out with cooler people. <coughs> yeah. Is that? And by cooler, we mean we're going to wear our sun shirts. <laughs> and Nipples our... Nipples for days. Our uh, four smarties high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Any questions about anything? Because we're going to get on to the Pearl Zonker shortly, yeah. like really quick. And... Uh, yeah. Might as well. <laughs> you act like you have some okay. intelligence. This to say. I do. The baking cam. Oh, look at this. Oh, well, this is brought to us by our friend Adrian Tebow again. Uh, like the it. master baker. <laughs> we need Adrian. to send, send that guy some uh, fruity pebbles. Yeah, I know. So he's made the Rice Krispie squares avec the cinnamon crispies. I did not know there was cinnamon crispies. Maybe he just put cinnamon on his crispies. We don't even know yet. <laughs> Who knows? Or do we? I don't know. But that's the Baking Camp, folks. Every Thursday, if you're hungry, this is not the place to be <laughs> because we will tease the taste buds. Ooh. But yeah, if you bake something and take a great photo of it, an enticing photo that makes people's jowls drool, send it in to us, tnl at flyfishingbover.com. If you have the recipe, send that in too because we will post the recipe. Just like the recipe is posted for the flies. Oh, yeah. And then you can make yourself food as we make trout food and bass food and pike food and permit food <laughs> and crabs next week. Oh, I got yeah. crabs got, next week. Got, got crabs. Uh, as we start getting into some saltwater things. And if you're thinking to yourself, I don't fish the salt. Why would I want to tie that? Because you can learn stuff and enhance your tying techniques by tying all different sorts of flies. So maybe you don't fish the crabs, but they're really fun. Salt water is really fun to tie. Yeah, super fun uh, techniques. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just they're a little bigger, unlike this one. <laughs> yeah. 
That's kind of oh man, look what Rick said. You, I'm sure you've had these, right? My wife just made two pans of the rice yeah, that's, with the chocolate on top. So Janine puts, she mixes oh. chocolate and peanut butter. Oh. And put that's that is Can her. Make that, please. That is her single Janine. If you're listening, yeah, please. If you're listening, and you want this to go to the next level, next week, please. <laughs> next please. week, please. You're pushing, you're rushing me. Please. <laughs> I want them. My mom All made right. them too growing up, and oh, they were delicious. Those it literally. Two things I need is, this season: that and whoopie pies. I will be your whoopie pie. <laughs> So Jim James William Crawford was in the salt this last week, yeah. and he caught a crocodile. What? Caught a crocodile? He did. He caught a crocodile. Was it? It wasn't a caiman. Well, it 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 could have been. Either way, that's insane. What but did he, you catch it on? I don't know. He just sent me a picture, and he goes, mm. uh, "He's not home," but oh, he yeah. sent me this. Justin, are you coming next week? Couple crocodiles, and he put a rope in there. I don't no. know. I don't know what he put in there. He's probably cheating. Oh, I got to say, oh, Morgan, Morgan the oh. pumpkin cookies. <laughs> I've had the privilege oh. of once, and it was. Oh. I have to say, Morgan, my disappointment level of not getting them when you came with me this summer was. That's a uh, good point. That's a good point. But, I but did you get, did. I, I did get them. Bruce later. had them too, Cameron. Remember, he was out. Oh, yeah, he was Wasn't out that he? day. We all got one that day. Yeah, Bruce was there that day, 100%. Was he? Yeah. I'm sure that was him. Bruce. Bruce is watching the Flames game. Yeah, pay attention. Reading his bud. reading his new Fly Fusion magazine that he posted about today. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna use black thread. We're gonna want to use something bigger because it is a streamer pattern. So yeah, um, a one forty or a three aught six aught would be good. Oh, Justin needs his monthly cuddle. Oh, and you're see, coming down. Morgan is. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. She is. She's, she frequents Olds quite often. She has a friend up here, I, I heard. And uh, maybe she will come to Tracks next Thursday. Yeah, so, with a um, delivery. If you guys need places to say, do all the sun shirts have the same fit? They're supposed to. Yeah, I um, think so. We had one that we thought maybe felt a little the different. The white one we felt was a little different, but uh, they're... Yeah, they're all. It so depends to be. on your build. Like, yeah. uh, like Dana was like, "Oh, I upsize. It feels great for me." I, well, I did downsize yeah. once. I tried an extra small. And the sleeves came to like there. Yeah, that was. But bad. it felt great. The rest of the shirt felt great. Yeah. But. Well, you're know. about 14 kilograms soaking wet. Uh, that's not true. Okay. I've earned every kilogram. So get your bobbins threaded. Yes. And we're gonna tie the pearl zonker. We're allotting time here, guys, to talk tonight. Okay, so we're not trying to rush anybody through the patterns, but we're just going to, just because they're quicker patterns, we can tie them at a somewhat normal speed. And also we have the quick ties, but we want to hold space tonight for people to chat about, about the world. Um, what size for Crawford? What what? Uh, what size for Crawford? Well... Does it have to fit over his head? Because that's no shirt fits over Crawford's head. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to cut you, the You hole. know I used to work for him, right? Oh, I do. <laughs> when I was like 17, 18. Were you this mean to him then? We're, we're playing bingo, Adrian, after this fly. Yeah. Yeah. So Bingo's bingo coming. will essentially be at the same time as it is every night. Uh, we're just going to hold this tie or tie this fly. And then we're going to come back and we're going to play bingo. And then we're going to hold space tonight to just chat. Because uh, I think that that's super necessary um, of all things yeah. happening here. And, uh, my yellow Great. light just died behind me, but um, we have our blue and yellow lights hanging up here. Obviously, you guys can uh, kind of guess what that's about. Uh, so we're going to BS for like an hour. No, well, whatever. Uh, we're just going to be here, hold space for people to chat and... Uh, yeah, our so our, our halftime show is not going to be a movie. We're just going to use that time after we play bingo uh, to chat. That's yeah. what it is. You're still mad about your hockey stick to your butt. <laughs> this is abuse. Yes. I can't take this. He said, you're the laziest SOB I've ever met in my life. I don't know <laughs> how. Said. Oh, yeah, he was, uh. he was mad. He's like, I don't know how you're any good at hockey. Because you're the laziest person I've ever met. Well, you did do some pretty yeah. lazy things in your day. Uh, those are called intelligent. 
Work, you work, work smart, not smart, hard. Smart, not hard, Jim. <laughs> I taught you a thing or two. <laughs> oh, All right, man. folks, let's get into tying this. Yeah. Pearl Zonker. A fly for salt, a fly for pike, a fly for brown trout, a fly for bass. that even Mikey likes it. That didn't oh, rhyme. Yeah. That didn't uh, rhyme. You were, All right, you were on, a, on a roll, and it was oh. gone. Might need to back that out. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit uh, tight. So, guys, we've got a uh, 3X long. It's going to be a size, I believe this is a size 6 hook. We are going to get this in our vise and make sure it's good and secure because we're going to be pulling pretty hard on it. Yes. And then we're going to, yeah, I'm going to use, I would suggest using a black thread. Um, the original style of this pattern, you actually use two color threads. You use a red and a black. I'm just going to do it in all black because it just it doesn't make any sense to me. But... That's okay. What you are going to need, though, if you do have some UV resin, go prep that for yourself because that'll make your life a little easier for this pattern. Because we do use it a couple times. Um, we also are going to put on um, some lead wraps. So you did get a little bit of lead wire in your kit. At least you should have. Um, what I want you to do is start off by just coming and kind of, I like to place my finger and hold it there. And I'm just going to take some wraps. Okay, so just one sec. So, Greg, <coughs> the uh, what happens sometimes is if it's an American payment, sometimes your bank, and this isn't, you're not, this isn't, uh, I hate when I, when <laughs> I talk screen. from uh, the abyss here. Sometimes what happens is the bank is like, oh, it's a Canadian or whatever. They're not, they hold back. Um, it, it happens often on our website and I don't know why. And it's not, it's not a you thing. It's just, uh, it's it, it. I don't even know how to say to fix it. Um, you don't need to send do me an drunkers. email, Greg, uh, TNL at flyfishingboarder.com. Tell me which one you want, so I can pull it out of inventory uh, if it's still there, and then we can figure out that those details after. If that works, Greg, I appreciate you, and uh, that's how we do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna put a few more wraps down here. Okay, this is just lead wire, super uh, malleable stuff. When you get to where you want, you just kind of tug on it, it'll break off. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> Hold it until it tugs. Hold it until it tugs and breaks. And I'm just gonna take that bottom section and make sure it's uh, it's good. You can put as much or as little in here because we're gonna cover this up with the mylar anyways. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna start it just off in front of those lead wraps. And I'm gonna trim out the tag. And now when you're wrapping over this stuff, what I like to do is do some open spirals, but not super tight. Get to the other side of the wire, secure it there before I start putting any wraps over top of it. And then I can just put some wraps over top, really just basically covering up that wire. Um, it could be visible through a little bit, but it's not gonna be anything crazy. Once I do that, I'm just gonna move my thread back. And now one little thing I'll do here is I'm just gonna take a little bit of my UV resin and I'm going to lay it on top of that wire. And that way I know it's not going to go anywhere for sure, for sure. Hit it with my torch. It's good to go. Now guys, we're going to do a couple of tie-ins here at the back of the fly. And the reason I want you to have a little bit heavier thread for this first part is because we, we do need to put some tension. Um, so when we're working with this, um, this mylar tubing, oh, what did I do with mine? Did I drop it on the floor? <laughs> Like everybody else dropping everything else. So Joel House just sent me a picture of his bedroom wall. His bedroom wall? A picture of Katie Holmes oh on his wall. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Did we just yes. become best friends? Yes, he did. Oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind, Dana. What do you need here? Sorry. That's okay. I'll grab another one. I was looking. I put my mylar somewhere and I can't find it. Well, it uh, when you cut it off the last one. <laughs> I know, but I threw that one out too. <laughs> That's okay. So go ahead and grab that mylar, guys. And what you're going to notice is on the inside of the mylar, there's like a piece of rope. Rope-a-dope. Um, rope yeah. what, is, what is mylar in the know. real world? I don't know what they actually use it for. I Hold tight. I have know. a friend named Googiel. <laughs> Googiel. Googiel. Oh, my goodness. There it is. Never mind. I can, I'm so blind. Oh, wow. Look at that. Perfect, Tim. Perfect. Okay. So you can see there's uh, there's like a white rope in there. What I want you to do is go ahead and grab that and it just pulls out. So you can just see it go like this, pull it right out. 
Now, be careful down by these ends because if you touch them too much, they just like this stuff will just unravel. It's like this crazy network of like almost rope. And if you if it comes off, then it's hard to get it back together, and you gotta trim it, trim it, trim it. So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm gonna put this over the eye of the hook, okay, and start sliding it back down the fly. And I'm gonna try to push those little pieces out beyond my thread because that's what I want to kind of be like a sparkly tail. Okay. Doug says a little super glue before the the weight stops the the lead from spinning. Yeah. Good tip, Doug. Good tip, Doug. So now that Hope I've got, that wasn't your bad joke. <laughs> so now that I got that kind of splayed and coming out over the back of the, the hook, I am just going to grab it, make sure I can get a good initial wrap. Okay. So a nice tight wrap right there. I'm going to do another one. And you can see I'm pulling quite tight. So that comes off the back of the fly. I've got a nice tight wrap here taking some really tight ones so I know that's not going to move because the thing I don't want is for that mylar to spin. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to take just a small touch of some UV resin. Okay, all I did is just coat the thread slightly so that that tension I put on there I don't lose when I start putting in my next material. Okay, so that's going to lock that down into place. How about the beats? Yeah, it's, this is back to K-pop. This isn't K-pop. This nah. is like what we call trap. Sounds like it. Or electro. It looks like Mrs. Jennifer Lyle needs an SOS break. Oh. We will hold tight. Mm -hmm. and we will come back mm -hmm. to these guys. Because Steve's time with Emmett tonight and sent me a first fly. Your camera works better, but you could show that to the camera. That's Emmett's first creation. Nice. Tying with his dad, Steve, tonight. Nice job, Emmett. Oh, awesome, and he, he, he's even getting to tie on Steve's oh, brand new Norvice, which that. he picked up at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop today. Nice. That's pretty cool. It's awesome. Good job, Emmett. <clears throat> well, Scott Scott, what can I say about this torch? Well, this is uh, Mr. Blake Teague gave this to us last year. I don't even really know. I don't know what it is. It's, um, he said it's like, I, I, where's Blake? He's not here. Well, this is what it's called. We take Bingo we away it. from Blake, and he's... It says Stylus Pro... Streamlight. Streamlight. But it uh, is. It's actually, like, of all the lights I've used in a while... It's really good. It's just got a really high torch whatever. Like, torch high. It's got high torch high. High torch. High torch. Uh, where's yeah. Rosina at tonight, Dana? <laughs> well, don't you worry. Okay, I'm busy. Oh, I'm man. trying to crack a beer. Trying to do all these things. Is, uh, is our SOS off? Yeah, you good there? Uh, Jen, Steve. You probably asked the West so we could text you. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> okay, so the qu there was also something there that said when I switch thread or if I'm going to use two colors of thread, I would have started with red here and I would just left a red butt. Okay, that's what you're essentially trying to do. So when I were to go move to the front of the fly, I'll tell you when, then that would be when you went to your black. Um, traditionally, they use red thread at the back. It just makes a red collar right at the tail. So... Awesome. Okay, we're good to go. Okay. All right, so the next material we're going to tie in here is we've got some, some white uh, zonker. Okay. Now, I want to create a tail that's about the length of the hook shank. So from here to here, long. So, but you got to separate it. So you kind of peel some back and forth. And what kind of makes this easier is if you actually moisten your finger a little bit. And this stuff is furry in the mouth. And then that gives you a little bit of a tail. And so when you tie Moisten it in. Moisten it again. This one is <laughs> just. <laughs> that was so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> this one is just beyond that length, but pretty close. I like it. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to lay it right on that tie in point. I'm going to moisten the fingers again so I can get that one out of the way. Thank you for the sound effects. I'm going to bring my thread up and over. And I want this to be right on top, okay? I don't want this to wrap around the side. So take some nice tight thread wraps. I'm gonna take like three or four. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, same thing I did before. And I'm gonna put a little bit of UV resin just on those thread wraps. And down kind of underneath. And now that I got that, I'll torch it. Make sure that's good and secure. And then all I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm actually just going to cut my thread, okay? Because I know that it's secured with that UV resin. 
Okay. All right, Mark's peacing out, brother. Cheers. See you, Mark. I love you, pal. Get some sleep. It's only ten o'clock out there. What's the what's the flame? I gotta check, guys. I'm gonna keep us live updated yeah. on the flame score. Somebody's watching flames. So you guys don't have to go anywhere, Bruce. <laughs> Both bruises Both seem bruises. to be gone. I'm just gonna pull that out of the way with a little hair clip, <clears throat> and now I'm gonna come and focus my attention on the front of the fly and what I'm gonna do next with this mylar. So I'm gonna cut it basically right where the just beyond the eye, so I can see the eye there. I'm gonna trim that. I got enough. Definitely enough to do another pattern. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back a little bit. You can see how it kind of recoils back. Now I'm going to start my my thread there again. Now this lose out back to bed. See Bailu. This People would be, get tired on the East Coast. Yeah, they do. This would be where you would want to be switching to that black thread if you haven't already. Trim that out, and now I'm just going to kind of let that mylar come back to me, and I'm going to do a. Uh, clockwise spin because I'm left-handed is to be counterclockwise if you were right-handed and then I'm gonna take one solid gathering wrap all the way around this stuff hold tight shoot so shoot shoot sorry Brent Struthers pulled a cam broke a thread broke a thread no way <laughs> so there you see guys all I did was secure that down in the front and what that does and this stuff is just funky to work with if you've never done it before you get the hang of it and that's what we say if you tie one tie 12 because once you tie this a few times um, this is not my first time tying with this stuff so if it looks easy it's only because I've tied a couple dozen of these before coming to the show tonight um, but it does become easier as you tie so Sean said did Super Mario just get the star the beats so if you guys check out Sean's profile photo on his YouTube thing that he is wearing a sun shirt and he's down in florida oh, yeah. another cool thing is one of our guides over in oman we sent some shirts over there tim can show the camera because i can't uh that's swabir swabir adishe one of our guides in oman representing on the other side of the earth that's awesome yeah. look good all right <sighs> Uh, Universal yeah. tomorrow early. Sean, you're on vacation. Yeah, come on, Sean. He just wants to win the bingo. He just wants to win the bingo. We're that's, making that's, you wait for it. I, well, it's tip. It's technically the, it's be a the time. Similar same. timing. We'll be done this in no time. Okay, how is that SOS going? Who gave us that one anyways? That was Brent Struthers. Oh, all ah. good. He just said all good. Release the SOS. Ah, Back right. to the tying cam. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So I've taken a few thread wraps there, and I'm going to take a few more back. Okay. Because I need a little bit more space up this head to do my collar. So all I've done is create a little space, basically like an eye length back from the eye. Created some space. And all you want to see out of that mylar is that it looks pretty much even. You know, you see it from both sides. It's got a fairly even um, appearance to it. This stuff is a great, does a great job of replicating a, a minnow belly. It's, it literally looks like scales on a fish. It's great. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and grab our saddle hackle, which we've got here in red. Okay, a red saddle hackle. I'm gonna come to where the fuzzies start and I'm gonna peel those fuzzies off because I don't wanna use those. And I'll just trim off that little bit of butt. And now I'm gonna tie this in right where I left my thread. Okay, so we take maybe one more wrap back. Secure that. And then I'm gonna tie this in right on top with the underside of that saddle hackle pointed back down the fly. Just kind of how we always tie in our, our hackles. Okay. Now I'm gonna work that um, butt into the up towards the eye a little bit before I trim it out, so I know that it for sure is not gonna go anywhere on me. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put a quick little half hitch, save that work, set that up front here, and now I'm gonna start wrapping this. Okay, so I like to kind of pull pull those fibers down the stem, kind of bristle them up, and then as I start to wrap, I'm gonna Again, I'm gonna moisten my fingers and I'm gonna stroke the fibers so they, that they wanna lay rearward when I wrap them up on top of each other. So I'm gonna get this nice bushy collar that I want. And you can get a good three, four turns. However, whatever you can really get out of your feather, um, it's okay to overdo this collar a little bit because we really do like that prominent, prominent red. This basically gives us an appearance of gills or possibly the fish is wounded or, or whatever. And so that's gonna grab that fish's eye 
um, to the fact that maybe it's a wounded. What happens if it only has one eye? Tim, have you ever caught a one-eyed uh, fish? I actually caught a blind fish once, yeah. <laughs> one-eyed blind fish. When you're good, you're good, folks. Yeah. No, I just had to cast to the other side of his face. <laughs> so all I did was I secured that feather, okay? Now I'm going to take this and pull it all of those fibers back, like so, and take a few more wraps, kind of pushing up against them. I'm going to trim out that little tag. Okay. Now I really want to grab all of those and get them back. And I like to lay a couple of thread wraps right at the base of where I left the collar. And that actually forces those to go back a little bit. Okay. Which again, I like. I'm going to put a little half hitch again right in front of that collar. This is just like our save button. It's just going to hold our thread where we want it. I'm going to get my, uh, my thread out of my way. Go ahead and grab this, uh, this zonker. Now what I want to do is I want to take and split those that collar on either side of the fly, okay? So that I'm not actually wasting any of those feathers or those fibers from that feather getting covered up by my, my uh, zonker anyways. Then I lay that down on top, okay? Now I have to kind of pick through this again, moisten up my fingers a little bit. Good, good, good. So that I can separate and find right where the head of that is and that's where I'm gonna pull it down. I don't wanna leave all this extra fur up here and then tie it down because it would make way too um, poorly proportioned head shape on this one. So I'm going to come here. Again, I want this to be right on top. I don't want it to let it slide around the hook shank. Take a couple pull tight. Go up underneath it. And now I'm going to come in here and trim out. And I wanted to have, the reason I left myself a little bit of space at that head is now I can really build the head of the fly that I want. So I'm going to put some thread wraps down. I'm not too worried about bulk here. I'm more just worried about covering up that zonker, um, the leather portion of it, making sure I got a nice, even tapered head, hopefully able to finish right up behind here, which I really like how that turned out. That looks good. I'm then gonna do a quick little whip finish here. I'm not gonna overdo it because I'm gonna take resin on the entire head and give it a nice little sheen. Like so. Oop. And I'm gonna come in here, trim that out. And then I'm just gonna grab my resin. Again, I'm using the bone dry UV resin uh, from Solar Res. And I'm gonna coat all of the thread. Because I've got that nice little dam build, but I don't want any of those to slip. And I wanna just give this a nice little shine, shiny appearance to the head. Makes it look even a little bit more professional. Get that on there, get that, make sure it's not tacky anymore. It's good and dry. The game started zero zero. Nice. Still zero zero. And there you have it, guys. That is your pearl zonker. Oh goodness. And that is a super. And I'm telling you, in the water, that's that's a that's a great looking fly. Don't look past some of these traditional styles of tying fly. You don't see mylar get used very much outside of maybe saltwater now. Um, but a lot of trout flies and stuff were tied with it. A lot of uh, a lot of patterns included it. Don't be scared of it. I, hopefully I showed you that tonight in a way in that it doesn't look intimidating to work with because what a great way to make a big bulgy looking minnow belly that's got, I mean, that's 10 times better than having flash in your fly because every little piece of that is going to sparkle and twinkle and twinkle become the so um, hey joel sather welcome brother better late than never what you didn't uh -huh. do is miss bingo because that's yet. flying goes coming up quickly but to answer your questions they're best served on the comment page so you can use eyes on this pattern if you wanted um uh marvin are you thinking of just like putting eyes on and putting resin over top or are you thinking of putting like lead eyes? Because if you did, the fly would swim different. And I personally haven't fished this fly enough to know uh, what that would do to how it swims. Yeah. Because the weight typically in this pattern is put in the middle. So that kind of balances the way it's, it's weighted. But if we put lead eyes or dumbbell eyes, I guess you could call them on the front, that that causes your fly to to dive, yeah. and then when you strip, that causes the fly to come back up. So I don't know. Um, so it. yeah, just try try tie a dozen, put six of them with eyes, and if you're having more success with the ones with eyes, then you just yeah, use the question. eyes more. I think what we have to remember in fly tying 
kind of the cool thing about since the beginning of Thursday Night Live is there's a lot of constraints around the traditional fly tying world. Yeah, and this that's... isn't to knock any of that stuff, uh, but oftentimes uh, we get knocked in the traditional fly tying realm because um, probably because I would consider myself more of a practical tire than a traditional tire. And yeah. a lot of people have these constraints around this pattern must have this and this and and I think the cool thing about mine and Tim's relationship is uh, he's more of the tire and I get to throw ideas at him and we bounce ideas around and it's like oh man let's try this let's try that like peacock curl we had the what was the stuff that yeah it's like a uh, it's uh, like ice on a, oh, you, oh you mean that other stuff yeah, yeah like that? and I um, bought some of it oh this stuff here it was like micro, micro, micro chenille. Yeah. And it was a great replacement and for it, Peacock Curl, and it's way stronger. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not Peacock Curl. Yeah. And I think Peacock Curl has something in it or to it that works. But there's, you know what I mean? Like, we try. We got to try that stuff and get creative. Mm -hmm. um, and now, obviously, people get so creative uh, personal opinion I just see their their pictures and I'm just like what are we doing here like we don't <laughs> have to reinvent the wheel no uh, but definitely substitute change yeah like they, like Marvin just said throw some eyes on it like 100% uh, Greg I just got your your message and I pulled the large retro out of the stock so nobody can purchase it and we'll figure out how to get that um, yeah. that working for you so don't worry about that the thing uh. with fly tying guys is it's it's an art like it's your art so if you choose to make something look a certain way like how do you think all these people created these patterns it wasn't they just tied it once and did it it was a lot of trial and error and i think that we need to remember and that's one reason i love fly tying is because it takes fly fishing is not just five months a year that you sit on the water it's everything it's diverse you get to make yeah. a fly that's it's an art you get to build something that then go catches a fish with and when you do that, I know that a lot of people in here have tell me that wasn't extremely satisfying and take you right back to the drawing board to try another one. Yeah, so uh, Finn Bakken from Norway is in the house. So we want to welcome a hey, new man. TNL fam member from across the seas. Welcome, That's Finn. Awesome. Have you been here before? It's the first time we've seen you. So uh, we just finished tying up a couple patterns, the Pearl Zonker, the Shop Vac. And uh, we're about to play bingo, so I've thrown up the bingo. Get your bingo cards here. We'll wait a couple minutes just so everybody who's just joining can get yeah. the bingo cards. Bingo cards, bingo cards. Um, so like Tim said about fishing being, or, or fly time being an art, well, fly fishing is also an art. Very much so. Because the best thing is, is there's not really rules. And I think too many people, I think that's why fly tying and fly fishing is, um, it's, it's hard because, because people, they, uh, peacock or they grandstand with all of these materials and all these, these techniques and stuff. There's tricks and stuff that you pick up along the way. And we encourage you to watch a lot of other tires because you're going to learn stuff from a bunch of different people. Uh, but the idea is know why you're putting stuff on a fly and then and then go from there. And I mean, it's like the Prince Nymph, like people go uh, next level trying to reinvent the Prince Nymph. Well, the Copper Jaw and the Prince Nymph, the Hair's Ear, like there's some patterns that have been literally around forever and they work everywhere. Uh, whoever came up with the idea of those patterns, they work. Uh, some people get into the streamer game and they just build these like monstrosity of streamers when your pearl zonker or your creelix there's one right there it's literally one material a hook and um it's right in the top of the table there's just one there i mean there's no materials to that um but like one of the most effective patterns uh on the bow river and it's it's Creenix or Creelix is the material. Grab a couple different colors. Uh, we tied it last year in episode one. 
uh, a hook and some lead eyes or dumbbell eyes, whatever you want to call them. And it's like crazy. You don't have to reinvent the wheel on that fly. You just, just fish it, right? It works. So, um, yeah, remember, remember that is that we're not tied to the constraints of, oh, how do I say it? Like the traditional, the way of tying, tying should be fun and, and tying should catch you fish. And, uh, like the question that we stimulated all this was like, just throw eyes on it and then report back to us and let, let us know. Yeah, let Cause us know. I mean, you don't know until you try. Some of the flies that we come up with, um, they're not totally different than other flies. They're just a couple changes. And then it's like, Hey Tim, here's a dozen, try these out. And then he comes back and says, these, these are good. And then we give them to another guide and we say, try these. And he's like, these are good. Well, and then they're, it's a great fly and we use more of it and we tie a whole bunch in our, our box is full because we've just put it to use practical use. We've tried it. It's worked. We've let more people try it and it's worked. And then so it is. Do I, do we got to reinvent that fly? No. Well, it works. So why, why do that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We've got some. So let's say thanks to our sponsors. One time we're going to come back, get your bingo cards. They're right here. And then we're going to jump into bingo. Bingo. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, Sometimes we sing along to the commercials. <laughs> we sing along to all the commercials. You ever heard of falsetto? <laughs> all right, folks. And there it is. All right. That is the That's, water master that is, fly. That is fake. Okay, that is fake. Whoop. Whoop. We're on episode Whoop. 10. 10. There it is. Okay. No, 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 no. We start game. You saw it. I have to move. I have to move on. Oh, man. All right. Ooh, a close call there, folks. Remember, your bingo cards are free. You get your bingo cards right there at that website. If you haven't got them, and tonight we're needing an X to win. There's only one way to get an X, and that is an X. There's no other way than the top to the left to the bottom to the right on both sides. Perfect uh, X. X marks the spot. X. We need an X. I repeat that <laughs> 35 times. We need an X. I'm going to shout out the first four calls here. Just so you guys can kind of actually let's do eight. Yeah, get them going. Eight calls here because that could be somebody's victory. So uh, what you need to know, Tim, do you want to grab the prizes? Yeah. Uh, every week we play Flyingo, sponsored by Watermaster, um, and the gifts here uh, are from all of our sponsors. So what we have up first, Tim will show you some stickers. Some Watermaster and some Fish Pond stickers. We've got a package from our shore sponsors. About $100 worth of tying material, all sorts of different things from feathers, bias, dubbing, and more. We have a combination of Flatfish and Bovary Outfitters as well as Rocky Mountain Fly Shop coming and bring you this box full of. A dozen foam. A dozen foam flies. Flies that we are tying on the, uh, on the show this year. Some we've already tied and some that are coming. And then from our Watermaster sponsor, we got a dry bag. Oh, yeah. This little dry bag. Stuff all this so, stuff yeah, it's free, you. guys. You just download a bingo card and play with us. And if you don't even tie flies or you don't want to do anything else other than win, come here every single Thursday, download a bingo card, and just play along with us. Yeah. But you got to remember, there's a little challenge after you said win bingo. It's uh, we go into a little game of three doors just want to throw it out there you've got to pick the right door 
because one of those doors is heartbreak. And then... So is the other. Some of them are. One of them's a good one. But the prizes accumulate. So if nobody wins tonight, or if you do win but don't win, they'll accumulate. Such and such. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> we'll throw out two more here. Okay, Yo. so we've got the devil bug, which is tying next week. The yeah. foam cricket, the clink camera, which we tied last week. Silent Bob, which we tied episode one. Fly fishing bow river outfitters, which is us. The S2, which is tied on episode 19 or 20. The hackle beetle, which I believe is tied episode 17. The chubby Chernobyl, which is in the giveaway. And fly fishing academy, which is what it is. <laughs> so what you need to do... When you get your X, shout out bingo, and then you have an ID number on your card. Let us know what it is. So Grizzly Raft is one of Watermaster's rafts. The reason we kind of go slow is because the comments take a little bit to come in. So we also have a tiebreaker on here if you And we can tell tie. which one you actually won on. So don't worry. If you, yeah. if you put your comment in and you won first, you'll win. If you win on like Fly Fishing Academy... Okay, we it shows us. Yeah, it shows you'll see it too. Uh, all is fair. I can't even say that anymore. That sounds <laughs> weird right now. Stone flopper. All right, all right. So, so they're gonna start to disappear just because hopefully you guys. Stone flopper. Stone flopper also in the flies that there are in the, in the fly box one. from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Yes, yes, yes. All right, halfway there. Here we go. Foam is home. Stone, which also is in. Yeah, it's in there too, I think. Yeah. I think so. It's the foamulator. Rogers, so I got a box. Uh, <laughs> well, that's cool. Huh. What's that Do mean? you need some flies for that box? <laughs> All right. It's just going to wait. Things populate quickly here. Come uh, on. Somebody's got to win it. Fly and go. Watermaster rafts. Do you guys know what Watermaster rafts are? We're in one right well, now. We're sitting in one. And I'm telling you what, they are super fun. Here's a cool thing about Watermaster rafts. I'm going to call it another one. There's an live fly <laughs> time. Fancy that. Okay, there's rafts out there that you can get Walmart, whatever. There's a quality issue with a lot of rafts. <laughs> in the world okay yeah. the last thing you want on a good day on the water is your raft to not hold air to the bottom and your waders to leak so probably a couple of the two most important things and probably two of the more expensive things that you're gonna spend in your arsenal a hundred dollar fly rod catches fish and works absolutely fantastic a $20 reel holds line like the best of them. Cheap fly line, maybe not the best, but Get your, your raft that. and your waders, I'm telling you, it's yeah. what you want. Terry got four corners. <laughs> I finally got four corners. I wonder if there's even possibility to get an X. Well, I guess we're going to find out. Some people are down to two. A raft with no air is an anchor. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true. That's a fact. Good cam. I wonder if this is if this is possible. How many calls can we go to? I don't know. Someone's got to win. Eventually. Well, they don't because somebody that might not be here tonight, and then it's just a. It's a wash, uh. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Simple scud, which we Simple tied scud. earlier this year. Also a great bug. Great little knew, bugger. I knew the X would be tough, but I didn't think it would be this tough. Oh, this yeah, this taken. is tough. I don't know if they go for a potty break. I'm within three. Uh, calls one to six are right there. <laughs> can uh, I play? Yeah, well, you can. I will. <laughs> Tell me what I need. Need one. Two more. Say we're yeah, getting close. Yeah, we're getting close. Some people are almost there. Okay, <laughs> Jonathan, I hope you saw the one to six. Scroll down a bit here. Go back. Bruin raft. Bruin. That's another one of their rafts. Another one of Watermaster's raft. Might as well said Blacko Bingo. Well, 
We will say that at one point this Eventually, year. Eventually, you're not full card. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So, just so you check, Devil Bug, Foam Cricket. Bingo. Bingo. Right? Wow, this is a big night for yeah, Shelly. Shelly's on. Got it. a shirt, got a $50 Trax gift card, <laughs> and hopefully, oh, Cole, Cole's got a bingo. Oh, <laughs> this, all right, let's see who gets I'll it. I'll tell you what, folks. I do. <laughs> They're going to have the whole oh, card. Oh, I wish out. I didn't know the people getting bingos. <laughs> uh, okay, so Shelly, let us know what you got it on because Cole got it on Brew and Raft, card 141. Uh, 141 Brewing Raft So this is Cole's Just so everybody sees That yeah, is an X That is an X on the Brewing Raft uh, It's actually Allison got it <laughs> From that kick Cam <laughs> Cam you're so close oh. But let's just wait for Brewing Raft card 25 Okay so we do know that ties happen. Let's just double check this. The cool part is that both of those. Oh, Shelly. This is your card. She said 26, not 25. Oh, sorry. sorry. Did, I, did I screw that up? I don't know. She just she wrote 25. OK, there, there it is. There That's it is. better. Bruin Raft is the what she got it on. Yeah. So the cool part about this is that they both bought a shirt tonight. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Nice. Okay. Well, guys, you know what we need to do for the tiebreaker. We enter your numbers. Cole, what was Cole's again? Uh, Cole's was... 141. 141. Okay, yeah. you guys see it take place in real time. 141. 141. And, and I just hit go. <laughs> and and it, it spits out a winner, okay? <laughs> this Everybody's here. Here's this. <laughs> go. Oh, 141. Oh, Mr. Cole. Is that Cole? That's Cole. Well, Shelly, you also already won a $50 gift card. So that's a pretty good night for you. And uh, oh, we nice got to take Cole. Cole to Heartbreak Town. <laughs> it's, it's okay, Shelly. You didn't want to come. What's next anyways? <laughs> all right, Cole. Oh. You ready to lose it all? Okay. So what we need to do is go over here. The hard thing is, is it going to be the same? That you just don't even know. You don't know. Is is we we did find out that you're lazy sometimes. Well, so maybe you didn't change it. There's the pattern that people need to find. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where is it? Bingo overtime right here. Okay, Cole. All right, Cole. I don't know if you've already thrown out a number, but I love you no matter what happens. Uh, but I you may you. not love us. <laughs> Cole, has he picked a has he picked a it. door? Not yet. All right, Cole. My nemesis. Poor John. Oh, John. <laughs> How come it's people I know that have to go through Always. this? Always. I'm sweating. I'm already sweating. Everybody. Oh. Come on. Come oh. on. What is it going to be? Ron picks door D. <laughs> Richard Pichet picks door one. But Richard, it's not your time to pick. Oh, man. <coughs> Lots of people are saying one. One might work if you didn't change it. What's it going to be, Cole? Oh, well, do man. you think it would be fair to everyone else if I just... Allison, Allison picks, picks I like how he says three. that. Uh, Allison picks three. Oh. Uh, no, he uh, changed it again. Two. Wait. Two. Wait. Cole, what is it, Cole? Cole? Clarify. Clarify. Spell it out. Whatever your final answer is, spell it out. T-W-O for two. T-H-R-E-E -E for three. And... O N E for one. We need to know he had a reneg. Come Cole on. Cole had a reneg that might have just saved his bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on the back door. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> Three, Three, send, send it. it. <laughs> All right, folks. All pay right. attention closely. Final answer. Let's check out what's behind door number one. Door number one. Oh, 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 oh he didn't change it. Oh, I did change it. I did change you it. You did change it. I thought yeah. it was the one last time. No. And let's two. check out what's behind oh, door man. number two. I the door it. that he did not pick. He wanted to, but he didn't. Oh. Uh, well, it looks like you're gonna get something. Oh, Cole's oh, gonna Cole. go home with himself. Wow. A beautiful sticker pack from friends at Fly Fish and Bow River Outfitters. You enjoy this way too much. 
Everybody does. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> You're the only one saying that, though. Chip picked number two oh, last man. week, and that was the winner. Because one wasn't the winner. Oh, man. Well, Cole. Oh, goodness Go with the gut. The gut ruined you. Well, folks. <sighs> Dad's so mean. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Scott, you, call me. Come you on, man. That, Scott. Allison, Allison is Jack for stickers. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. Oh, man. Yeah. <sighs> I think we have to play the ads one more time, and then we'll come back, and we're going to go to uh, our wins for the our night. Our wins, yeah. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, So if you're not familiar with what this part of the show is about, um, this is just about sharing what you have going on in your life, understanding this is a safe place, and we want to know what your win is. It doesn't have to be big. Um, it can be small. It can be anything. Um, it can be big. That's amazing. Uh, sometimes just waking up and breathing in the morning is a win. So uh, we just want to hear from you guys. L leave some in the comments. We'll let you know what our wins are. And um, yeah, just use this as a place to... You know, conversation, conversation, bless each other. I, I mean, as much as it is, sometimes we don't get a great win this week. We have something, but not great. It, it really is encouraging to see other people and, and this is our family. So it's great yeah. to see them, you know, have good things happen to them. Yeah. And tonight, uh, obviously you guys can see, uh, the flag that sits behind us here and, um, yeah, we just thought we would kind of like move a little quicker through the tying part of tonight and just kind of hold space if anybody uh, needed to talk because most of us, it's probably not true, but in my generation, um, haven't gone through something like this as far as uh, what we're seeing on the news today. So yeah, we got to talk about it. I know some people say they just want to turn the news off and don't pay attention to it. I don't think that that's personally the, the, the remedy. Um, what I do think is having good people, good friends, or in a good space to talk about it because it is, I mean, for the past month, there's been a lot of uh, stuff happening within Canada, uh, now overseas, and it's actually kind of frightening. And I, I, I truly don't, I don't uh, engage in fear. Like I don't want to be a part. I don't want to let fear kind of enter my life. But there's other things that fear associates with, and there's uncertainty. And I think that's maybe one of the things that I'm feeling, uh, feeling right now. So this here is to just share we don't have to talk about ukraine we don't have to talk about canada we don't have to talk anything if it's something you want to talk about bring it up but what we are like tim said it's we talk about wins and what's important now uh some are big some are small it doesn't matter there's something between last thursday and this thursday that was a win and we want to hear about it so um I think what we're going to do is just kind of go through some of your guys's for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe we share kind of at the end. So 
Yeah, because uh, I find sometimes you guys start sharing and then we don't really uh, get to them. So this is going to jump up at the top of the screen where I don't want it. <laughs> so go ahead, Tim. Yeah, so Ryan, he said he's got to hang out with a good friend and spin some yarn with the TNL fam. Yeah. Yeah, that and is that's a win. A win. That is yeah. a fantastic win because uh, it's a positive part of his week. Uh, Richard said I ran into an old friend. He has a drift boat now, and now he's <laughs> Richard's very best friend. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Sean. Sean. His win. Checked off a bucket list item as a dad this week. Prayers for Ukraine. Yes. So this is a big one, guys. Um, Mike's going uh, for prostate cancer surgery next Tuesday. Uh, all the positive vibes, prayers are coming at you. Um, if you guys aren't friends with Mike on Facebook, Adam is your friend. It means a lot when people reach out to you and just say, Hey, we're thinking about you. Um, so yeah, feel free. Uh, Mike, we wish you all the best as you go through this and we're definitely here. Uh, we can't wait to have you back for episode, uh, 12, which will be in a couple weeks. And uh, if you need anything in between that, reach out to us. Let us know. Yeah. Greg, after he struggled <laughs> to get the shirt <laughs> home, the favorite part uh, of the show. Yeah, this is one of the best parts of the show. Yeah. <coughs> Jacob, so he said, no real wins this week, but my heart feels heavy for the world and our country. Yeah, I feel like uh, we had a lot of that for a long time. Um, Dana said something to me that kind of resonated. I know he said it to me before, but he he made the statement today. Man, he said we're we're becoming calloused. You know, we're it's powerful when you really think about it. But we, I mean, for us, what hap what's been happening in our country here in Canada and all the things that are happening out east, we literally all of a sudden went from that being a huge issue to the whole issue kind of being dropped, and then today it's Ukraine, and we we're not getting it's time. Like talk not, more elaborate, like. <laughs> All of a sudden yesterday, something yeah. that was crippling Cons our country, and Trudeau says, oh, I've released emergency measures. And then, you know, yeah. to what Tim was talking about, it's like today, all of a sudden, it's like we just flipped this, the next page of trauma, the next page of sadness, the next page of heavy heart. And it's like... We yeah. don't even know what normal is anymore. Like, we, we just go from one hurt to the next hurt. We've been in two years of of hurt and justified or not that's just the truth and we do we build these calluses and and all of a sudden maybe some of the things we're about to see in the next coming days don't even look that bad which is almost scarier because we we're are so callous to, to it. it we're yeah. used to just seeing bad things we're a, a scar tissue society right now yeah and so as we say that as tim says says that it's like what brings us out of this is so think about it like you have a like really think about it like get out of your head and into your body and think about a scar and then touch your scar and you can't it feels weird you can't really feel it and uh, probably a feeling we never get back but what I encourage you guys and like Jacob said is just his heart feels heavy is I encourage you guys to sit in the pain but don't do it alone and that's exactly what we're doing here tonight with you know kind of uh, changing the way we do things is 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 feel things again uh, if you want to sit on the edge of your bed and ball your eyes out if you want to go find a friend like Chaz he said he's coming next Thursday mm -hmm. if you guys have never met Chaz and you've never had a Chaz hug I can't wait like I'm counting the days down <laughs> to get a hug from Chaz and um, I'm, I'm sitting in the pain because we need to feel again. We need to know what we're, we're so calloused. Everything just it like quickly turns over and it's like we're on to the next thing. And that scares the heck out of me for what's about, you know, like five years from now, we look back and it's just like we don't feel pain anymore. And that's not that's not human. And if you don't feel pain, you can't give love because love is such a powerful emotion and I encourage you guys to sit in the pain a bit and be okay with that. You don't, we don't have to know what's going on. We don't have to have it all figured out. It's okay to hurt. 
but reciprocate that to your friends, to your people around you with love and just love on people. We don't all have the same opinion. Here I am preaching, but it's like, we don't have all the same opinions. We don't have the same background. And it's like, just have some patience and some love with the people beside you. And if you don't agree with what they have to say, just love on them. Like, it's okay. It's okay. But sit in that pain. Don't callous away from it. And and I'm telling you, when you when you force yourself to to be positive and to love and to love and to truly love on people, it removes the callous and you'll feel the pain. It hurt. Things hurt a little more, but you're becoming real again. And that's what scares me for what's about to happen. The other thing we shared was we're about to see stuff we've never seen before because this is a social media world of a war that we didn't have social media back in, you know, like 9-11 era. And so we're going to see stuff in such real time. Maybe that's something you guard yourself from, but yeah, it's going to be different. Rant, rant rant over. (laughs) Uh, It just, I'm passionate about it because it, it does. It really scares me how callous we are to like everything that happens and how quickly our society gets over something. All right, Justin Cole, my marks for Red Seal ticket yesterday, which was my birthday. Wicked birthday present. Congrats. I would play you the birthday song, but it will wreck this scene. (laughs) Uh, Adrian, my win. A lot of stress going on, but managed to get a new um, new to us SUV that will fit the whole fam plus grandparents. Otherwise, it's hard to complain about life. I'm here on TNL with all this fam. Love you all. I love you too, brother. Cody, my winner's daughter is his daughter Isabella got accepted to vet school in St. Kitts. Nice. Happy to see her go, but sad she's gonna be gone. Dread those days. That's uh, yeah, that's <laughs> letting the bird fly. All right, Ron. Yeah, he said my loss this week was the passing of my brother-in-law, way too young. My win is the outpouring outpouring of support for my sister from our small community. Yeah, Ron, well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. That is that is tough, but I'm happy to hear that you do have a community around you because that's exactly what this is. It means a lot. Troy's... <coughs> and I forgot to sign the books. Ugh. Wow. We did. I thought about it today and it ate me, so we'll figure out something. I, I I was so excited to ship them out because <laughs> they came so fast. Oh, and then yeah. I was like sitting here today and uh, I got to sign them. Troy's win was receiving his book and he learned that it's OK to talk about issues with your fishing buddies and friends. Thanks to you guys. So <laughs> that's awesome, Troy. If not, if not them, then who else? You know, I mean, that's some of the best parts about sitting on the river is one of my favorite fishing memories besides waking up next to you in a <laughs> small bed in Montana was later that day oh, yeah. uh, when we just sat in the back channel. <laughs> this is going south. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we didn't fish. We just sat there for five hours. There was a little poke of sun. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we soaked every <laughs> inch of it in. <coughs> oh, man. Had a couple, that, was, uh, that was a blast. Yeah, we yeah. And then we saw some rising fish. And yeah. And then our friends came and yeah. went over them. and it Plowed right over <laughs> them. Garnet if you're here. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Jeff, my win is all you guys and most of all my family. Uh, skiing Baker on Saturday with my boys is what I live for. With everything going on around us, it's always important to pull our circle tighter and just appreciate us. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Chas, got to present my philosophy on leadership and Moxie twice today. The presentations were great and went well. It was nice to reach out to people across the world. They got to hear our story as a family and as a construction manager trying to change the industry through heart, Moxie, and vulnerability. Oh, that's wicked, dude. That is Chas. Yeah. Huh. Oh, man. Craig, my win. So fortunate to live where we do. Freedoms and safety. Thoughts going out to all those affected by the actions of a person who's not well. Yeah. Hurt people hurt people, but healed people heal healed people. people. All right. Roger was released from physical therapy this week, gained a lot of flexibility, and gained a fishing and hunting friend through it. So Sounds that's like a win. Awesome. <laughs> Joel Sather, random last minute trip to Montana last weekend and got lucky with the weather and slayed on the Gallatin and the Madison. 
Also just got drawn for a float permit on the Smith River in June. That's so exciting. Life That's is awesome, good. Man. I saw you guys were in Bozeman. That's good wicked. for you. All right. Steve Lyles. Emmett's first fly. Big win. He walked in last week. It was like a switch, and he was all about TNL. He's been asking all week if he can be in again. So he was surprised when Steve had a setup ready for him to go today. Peace and love. Mr. McCarthy, my mom had a birthday on Saturday. She turned 93. Wow, happy birthday. That is impressive. Would also play. We got to ask birthdays <laughs> earlier. It's true. Yeah. Mike, yeah. we'll see you on episode 12. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thoughts yeah. going great, Mike. Yeah. Just scrolling through the comments here. It's getting caught up here. Chaz's hugs can take your breath away. <laughs> Not just for your physical force. Cool. My turn? Yeah. My is. win of the week is hearing a good friend's family members are getting healthy. Allison took me to a Flames game this week that was postponed, and we beat Seattle. And you won some stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Greg. Totally blessed to have each other. Thanks for the platform. Sharing, growing, and healing together. That's the plan, man. It's the plan. Barry, they say that going through the struggles makes us stronger. I'm deeply worried that we don't have the right leaders, free world to solve the world problems. Well, to add to that, I don't know if we'll ever solve the world problem. So if we always look for someone else to lead us through the storm, I don't think the world's ever going to yeah. change. And so I challenge you, Barry, one interaction at a time, spread a little cheer, be a little more lovely. Not that you're not lovely, yeah, how but how could you be more lovely than Barry? You can't, <laughs> but it's up to us because there's how many world leaders a handful and how yeah. many billions of people. So if yeah. the group of people like ourselves, love more and share a little more love and spread a little more cheer we bury change and solve the world's problems yeah tom pape trying to make some changes at work and got some needed support from the boss and buy-in from the staff that is a win-win win -win. yeah oh justin passed away this summer and due to covid we're not able to have a funeral uh, we finally able to hold a celebration of life for him, which is a big deal for me. He was truly my best friend and a big part of the man I am today. It will be a hard day, but I'm excited to celebrate his life and all the time that we shared together. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Thinking of you, man. It's so tough. Yeah, yeah Andy, he said, I, re I read today that parents in the Ukraine are showing their kids blood type on their kids' clothing before they send them to school. My win is that we live here where we don't have to do that to our kids in Canada. Prayers to the Ukraine. Also, we had a sleigh day for Pike on the weekend. I saw that, man. Seven of us um, iced 50 fish Saturday. Amazing day. I love people catch fish. Good tip from Cam. Um, just being real versus protective. It's hard to navigate and teach in the same moment. Yeah, that's, you know, it was interesting. I had a conversation with Ren about it this morning. You know, when she's six years old, how much does she comprehend? I don't know. And, and maybe my philosophy is wrong, but I've never hidden things from her. Yeah, And we I try agree. to be like, I told her exactly kind of what was going on and whether she grasped it all or not, you know, a little tears well up in her eyes. And she's like, should I be scared? And I'm like, no, you're okay, but you should be thinking of others. And I yeah. think you, it isn't, I mean, there's no handbook for navigating this stuff with, I mean, you can't, but... I think honesty will always prevail above all else. And it doesn't mean you have to give them nitty gritty details, but just, yeah, try to be honest with them about how you're feeling too. Cause if you're scared, it's okay to be vulnerable to your kids. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to wallow in the mire. Mr. Beglin, my win is the ability to, to be handy enough to fix my own stuff. Managed to get all the parts from my car and fix it. Yeah. I saw that. That's awesome. Yeah. 
It's, a, it's an interesting thing here, uh, and I think he meant Kennedy, not Jason Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss something? Uh, I was listening to this podcast the other day, and they said everything is ephemeral. You know that? Everyone know what ephemeral means? Do you know what that means? It means uh, it doesn't last long. It's just it disappears quickly. And so everything is ephemeral. Good times don't last forever. Bad times don't last forever. Um, and just to what Richard was talking about is like life goes on and things change. And what we got to kind of be aware of is that we don't get calloused and change for the worse on mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it it doesn't mean things don't suck and they don't change and that whatever but it's like yes everything everything is ephemeral yeah laura why it turns 12 tomorrow something positive to, to plan for yeah. and celebrate don't crash the show happy with birthday, the birthday song. we will sing it loud and embarrassing tomorrow oh yeah, <laughs> yeah happy birthday buddy <laughs> yeah this is an interesting comment uh it seems like there's a once in a lifetime event happening every day, every oh, other day. Yeah. It is exhausting and it is taxing. Having this group like the TNL fam is much needed in these times. We all have different views, but I think we can all agree that we're a family. Yeah. hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. From Duchess. Duchess, my win for the week is being uh, part of the fly fishing community. When I have a fly rod in my hands, my troubles melt away. hundred percent. Eric, I finally got moved out of my house and into the farm. Just need to get my cars moved over hopefully next weekend. When my house sells, I can be debt free. Sadly, all my dreams came true other than the fact that I'm all alone. Thursday nights are a highlight of my week when I'm not at work. Thanks for TNL. We feel like family because we are family, we Eric. Are, yeah. Like we've said so many times, uh, there, you're here for a reason. Scott. Today, my wife and I put all our Canadian vacations on the calendar for 2022, including our fish camp in uh, Killarney, Ontario. Thanksgiving at Deer Camp in November. Love my time north. Yeah. Yeah. Jose, my wind is my home, is my refuge from the heavy of the world and the amazing people God's brought into my family's life. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Touche, buddy. Yeah. Mr. Sather, my win is getting invited on a Smith River float draw in Montana with my son. The rest of the BS can disappear yeah. for a while. Hopefully you don't witness runoff on the Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's a fun time. Oh, yeah. This too shall pass. Life is a journey. Feel the feels. Smile and live with intent. And that... Oh, hey, Bruce is here. He is here. I want to say that feel the feels is something to take away yeah. is just feel the feel sit in the moment and don't like just feel feel because we're not going to feel soon if we just keep rolling on to the next big thing or the once in a lifetime thing like cole said we got to feel the feels to feel real Jeff says, my win is learning to realize even the smallest wins are important, especially considering all that is going on in the world. Every win is large. Cherish the good times. Yeah. Jacob came upon the group by accident a year ago. It's not accident. 100%. Whatever the, uh, whatever you feel brought you here. Uh, I know, I know that it's not, it's not accident. It's pretty cool. Uh, truly some of my well best friend and best friends that are here uh, are from TNL yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. we're the same boat as you guys Mr. Bruce Cole wins watching Tina with Morgan and hearing her laugh at the shenanigans and getting together with the whole family this weekend to celebrate my son's birthday family laughter and love could be better uh, <laughs> Brent my win this week is being back with the TNL fam. Thank you all for being here and sharing. It's so empowering. Peace, Mike. Okay, so uh, do you have something quick to share? We 
Yeah, actually, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm kind of hoping to get away from the world for a few days. I'm going out on a, a, a four-day overnighter on Cold a, Lake. A place where the world's yeah. going to be fishing with them. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah just, just to get away for a few days. It's, it's one of those things you're always excited about, and then you get to go, and now I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss my family and my kids. And my wife today was just like, you've been looking forward to this trip. Let the rest of it go and go and have a good time. So that's my win this week. I'm going to get to go spend some time in fellowship and hopefully forget a lot of what's going on for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. With his buddies down in a place called Cold Lake. Cold Lake. Come and join us. Uh, I will describe a win this week that isn't, uh, how do I say it? It's not tangible because it took place in an altered reality, which is called a dream. And I told mm. you about it this morning. Mm. So I don't know if you guys dream, I dream, and I'm not talking like when you're alive and awake, you're dreaming about things that you want to do in the world, but I'm talking about dreams when you're sleeping. Uh, uh, I don't do drugs, but I have some <laughs> absolutely fascinating dreams. And for my whole life, I've, I've dreamt lit- in a literal sense, not like sitting here like, man, if I dream about this. Uh, Thursday Night Live was one of my at sleep at night dreams that I had. Um, a lot of a lot of things. I feel like I've I figured things out in the middle of the night in a dream, and I woke up and I write them down because I'm like, man, that's it. I I got it. Uh, so I'm a, I'm an intense dreamer. Maybe some of you guys are in here. The cool part is uh, I had a dream last night that really changed kind of my reality right now. And uh, I don't remember the details like we never do, but somehow in my dream, I had 24 hours to live based on uh, sometimes I don't even like talking about it because I feel like I'm going to push them into reality, but I had 24 hours to live. I had a heart condition and somehow if my heart got over like 180 beats per minute, that was the end. And there was another person in my dream who had the same condition. Uh, I don't remember who it it was a girl and I don't remember who they were and uh, and I was just kind of living out my last day and I was like I was super sad because and why it was important about the beats per minute was because uh, loving climbing right now oftentimes on the mountain you you hit a your heart's going pretty quick and so I was like man I just go climb one last time and I couldn't do that because it would have put my heart in a different state but um, and I woke anyways, I, d- I never died in my dream, but I woke up and I just sat on a bed and I was, I was truly disturbed. And then I said, I was telling Tim about it today and it made me start to really intently look at like, am I doing the things like if that was truly my reality, what I have, I been doing the things I want to do. Am I doing the things I want to do? Am I living what I want to live? And I know that that's often cliche talked about and people will inspire you by saying, think about it. But like, I felt so real in that dream. And when I woke up this morning, uh, I wasn't scared. I wasn't, I was excited. And it was like, I want to do more. I want to be more. I want to love more. I just want to make more of a difference out there. And how can I do that? Uh, Because if that was my situation, could I sit there and say, I'm I'm content, so. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's okay to have reality checks once in a while. It keeps you so like, yeah. The dream, the dream that was my win, uh, was that. So Donna said, I got a chance to do a podcast with Tom Rosenbauer from Orvis. It came out last Friday, and many of my friends have posted about it, and made me really happy and proud of this accomplishment. That's, that's awesome, super Donna. awesome. Super uh, awesome. Yeah, good for you. We'll have to check it out. Tim's got a bit of a drive tomorrow, so tonight, yeah, tonight. So (laughs) awesome things like that that make you go wow. All right, folks. Well, it's the time of the night that I I do know which is the right button this time. Uh, John, I appreciate it. Appreciate Mm -hmm. you being here. Yeah, Uh, Richard, we're glad that you or TNL found you. Or Jim found you and brought you here. <laughs> Begs, we love you. Uh, everybody who who was a part of the conversation tonight, 
that's what it's about. Yeah. And uh, it was intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And remember, uh, the conversation doesn't end here. All these people in this group, you can lean on them. I know that. I can say that without a shadow of a doubt. And beyond them, you can lean on us. So don't hesitate to ever reach out. There's never a time which we're not going to be here for you. So Yeah. Sean, glad you made it from Florida with you and your sunburn. Yeah, I hope you get still sunburned. It's unbearable. All right, tracks next Thursday. Uh, be there. I want to meet you guys. Please come. It is selfishly for me. <laughs> Maybe for Tim. <laughs> it he is. He can speak for himself. Um, so, yeah, it's on the big screen. Come early. Uh, maybe the shop will stay open a little bit so that that I think they close at four on Thursdays and maybe they'll stay a little open a little later so you can come in and go to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Head over to Tracks Pub. It's pizza night there. The TNL episode 11 will be on the big screen. If you're in Montana, Wolf Creek Anglers has the kits this week. Go check them out. Um, if you want to go fish in Montana, head down there if you're in need of an awesome raft our friends at watermaster if you're bored and love reading and great articles and great photos fly fusion is the place to go and uh shore fishing supplies are incredible materials mm -hmm. and norvice spins these bugs <laughs> so <laughs> spins them up. until episode 11 over halfway guys that is depressing oh my gosh yeah well till next yeah. week I Next week will guys. be a good week. Hey, pray for Ukraine. They don't need good vibes. They need prayers. Yeah. Okay. And uh, until the next big event, <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys. Thanks, guys. See you next, next week. week. I can feel my body cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look at me deceiving. Let you get the best of me In bed with my worst enemy This is a no-go I just can take hold This is a danger zone Back up and get me home This is a no-go I just can take hold This is a danger zone Back up and get me So put your hand in mine Follow me Let me waste your time Set up the Do some stupid shit Take a seat Stop it down.